The FTDX-10 and the FT-710. Both of these are great rigs, but is the FT-710 just a strip-town FTDX-10? Welcome back to the DX Engineering Channel. I'm Michael, KI at R. We often get questions about the differences between the FTDX-10 and the FT-710. So let's compare the two rigs. Both radios have been around for a while. The FTDX-10 came out in 2020, and the FT-710 followed in 2022. The 10 is ranked second on Sherwood Engineering's receiver performance list, while the 710 is third. So let's start by comparing their receiver architecture. Both radios are software-defined radios, or SDRs. They use special SDR programs to apply sophisticated algorithms to a field programmable gate array, or FPGA. This approach has been around for over two decades, but the FTDX-10 and 710 have newer FPGAs in programming than SDR transceivers from 10 or 12 years ago. To make it easier, let's just focus on the differences between their receivers. The 10's receiver is called a hybrid SDR and is very similar to the top of the line FTDX-101 series. It has bandpass filtering, an extremely low noise oscillator, a super heterodyne mixer, and roofing filters ahead of an advanced SDR section. This approach is the reason the FTDX-10 achieves amazing receiver performance, especially in challenging band conditions. The FT-710 is also an SDR receiver, but it's not a hybrid. It uses a bandpass filter ahead of an ADD converter along with dithering, which improves the intermodulation characteristics of the receiver. The FTDX-10 has more buttons and knobs than the 710, with 22 buttons and four knobs. Three of the knobs have outer knobs. In contrast, the 710 has 17 buttons and four knobs, but no outer knobs. The buttons on the 10 are smaller, which can make the radio feel a bit cramped, while the buttons on the 710 are bigger and more spaced out, making them easier to reach. Since the 710 has fewer buttons, some functions might be a bit more challenging to get to. The 10 also has the multi-purpose VFO dial, or MPVD knob. This can be configured for various functions, but by default allows you to move quickly across the band. The 710 can move across the band quickly by turning the step MCH knob. However, this knob cannot be configured for any other functions. On the back of the FTDX-10, there are three USB connectors, four DEN connectors, and a DB9 connector. While the FT-710 only has two USB connectors and two DEN connectors. The FT-710 has a unique feature that the FTDX-10 doesn't, the AESS system. This system works like a crossover and a speaker, letting you mix the internal speaker with an external speaker like the ASU SP40. By choosing a crossover frequency of 700 or 1000 Hz and adjusting the internal speaker level, you can create a quasi-stereo effect. AESS uses the internal speaker for lower frequencies and the external speaker for higher frequencies. This can help improve the receive audio. The FT710 comes in two versions, the FT710 AESS, which includes the SP40 speaker, and the FT710 field, which does not. Something else that is different is that the 10 will decode CW, while the 710 will not. So, is the FT710 just a stripped-down version of the FTDX10? The answer is a definitive no. The FT710 is certainly not a budget radio. Both of these rigs are excellent performers. So, which rigs for you? Each of these rigs have excellent receivers and are feature-rich, and as I said earlier, both rigs can discern weak signals better than most modern rigs. If you're a diehard DXer or contester, the FTDX10 may be a better choice. And if you're a CW operator, adding the 300 Hz CW roofing filter makes a great radio even better. I did this on my FTDX10 and I believe it was worth every penny. If you're a more casual operator, perhaps the FT710 is for you. Now, I've talked to a lot of people who've purchased the 710 for Parks on the Air, and I can totally see why they love it. At the time of this recording, the FTDX10 is selling for $14,2995, dollars 
while the FT710 AESS is selling for $1049.95 and the field model is selling for $974.95. Both of these radios are a great choice whether you're brand new in the hobby, thinking about upgrading to a new rig, or even looking for a second rig for portable operating. Hey, thanks for watching today. I'm Michael, KI8R. We'll catch you on the next one.